Okay, so let's see if this is changing anything in our render. Render frame. So now we are done. It's rendering. Okay, Lux has started. So let's go to Lux and see what happens. Now, we can see that definitely this material is not having the spec, the white spec here anymore. It looks, even at this grainy stage, it looks more believable to me. And that's because we changed the specular color and we lower the, the glossiness and we add a little bit of scattering through the, the bump map. So we can replicate this technique on all the other materials as well. But I'm gonna be very quick here. So let's see. This material is called wall side top. So we want to do the same thing on the wall side top because we are getting these weird reflections of the opposite side windows. Okay, so wall side top here it is glossiness same deal in this case this is actually a grayscale but it's way too high this is high it's just too high for, for some materials so we're gonna lower it we're gonna go here do a quick preview still too high so we're gonna go in the hundreds Okay, much nicer, much softer. We have our bump map on this already, nice. So we're gonna just um, bring it up a little bit, a little higher. Okay, and uh, doesn't seem to, to be working much. When the bump map is not affecting your texture the way you hope, um, you can also increase the gain of the bump map. Be careful here because this jumps up very quickly, but 1.6, 1.8 can be good. Okay, so it's just a change, overall change in the texture. It's not very easy to judge at this point. All right. Now, one thing I don't like in the render is all this excessive brightness. And normally, you wouldn't see this in a real scenario. I mean, it could be that there is a window there, but this seems really wide open. So we're gonna just create a fake wall for it. And um, and you'll see that it will look a lot better, at least to me. So, in perspective view, we just create a plane. Okay. Gonna switch to the universal tool and uh, position the plane. Oops, I lost it. So I'm gonna go here plane, I'm gonna call it back wall. All right, and I rotate it in the X 90 degrees. Did I create a cube? No, okay, there, there it is. All right, and um, I'm gonna resize it to fit. There you go. All right. And we're going to just bring it closer. And a little, a little bigger. I'm going to do it with a scale parameter here. All right. So this is good. Let's go back to our key. And we can close, we can quit this part here and see if anything else is improving. Restart. And blam. So we'll give it some time to render this image and then I'll show you another couple of uh, important options here all right so look at here you see this number down here 
it's called 1SPX, 2SPX. Those are the samples per pixel. This number is your friend. When you see this number going in the hundreds, you start getting something, some kind of a good image. When you see this going in the thousands, two or three thousand, and I have rendered images in the range of 20,000 samples per pixel, then you will see real spectacular effects, especially with complex materials like glass and such. All right. So let's, um, let's go this other side here. The tone mapping. The tone mapping is described in the manual. You have a reality user's guide. There is plenty of good descriptions in there. Please, please, please read it. So I'm going to switch to linear in this case. And oh my God, what happened to my image? Well, linear is basically your fully manual, high-end professional photo camera. So in here, you can change all your parameters. So in this case, we are way overexposed because we have an exposure of a full one second. So let's change this to a more sensible uh, 250 of a second. And then uh, let's change our f-stop, which is the aperture our f stop to four and now you see one of the great powers of lux which is you can change the exposure of your image and you don't need to re-render if i want to be a little brighter here you know i can change the sensitivity of the film it will over expose these parts but that's okay i can i can deal with this it is a rather dark image so let's see if we can change anything in the material definition in studio actually in reality and um, improve things a little bit so one thing i'd like to see is this material here is called wall side top gl for glass and i can see that it is a separate material from the frame of the window i hope so let's try that let's change that material to glass i'm gonna go here wall side top GL. Now it's glossy, so no much light is going through that. We're going to change that to glass, and we're going to set this to architectural, which will make this glass um, simpler to render. One thing you have to be very, very careful here is in the transmission. Many times this parameter comes through from studio set at zero. You don't want zero, you want pure white. And I'm going to do the same for uh, this other material up here because I assume it's going to be the same but for uh, the downstairs. And so we're going to change it and adjust the parameters as well. There you go. So let's take a look if everything is okay. I cannot see anything else that needs to be changed. So let's switch to Lux and I'm going to stop the render but just I'll keep it here so I can compare it before and after with the windows turned to glass. So at this point, I should be able to get a lot more light inside the room. So let's do a quick render. Again, wait a second for the export and start another instance of Lux because we can. That is one of the nice things of having a separate external task as an external application doing the rendering and in a second we should see the difference and i think i'm gonna fast forward so that we can save some time see you in a few seconds
And yeah, we can see that the windows are already overexposed and that's okay because with this lighting condition, if we want to look at the room and expose the room correctly, then the windows are gonna be overexposed a bit. That's okay, it's part of the look. Let's see if it's any different from the other one. Oh, wait a second, I need to change the same parameter. So here we have a linear 80, 250 and 4. So linear 80, 1, 250 and 4. All right. And yes, we can see a lot more light. Um, these, these windows are actually overexposed, but that's okay. If I wanted to make them more uh, defined, I could use some other techniques. Maybe I'll explain this in another, um, in another tutorial, but it's definitely possible. The floor is still too shiny. It's really, this is not marble. It's you know, marble covering glass, uh, which is an insurance nightmare, but um i think we are getting there there is definitely more light around here so this is how you set up materials in reality with the glossy material and how you recognize some situations and how you set up a glossy material that will render perfectly without fireflies or other noise. I can assure you that this configuration will render for hours if you want, and at the end, you will obtain a perfect image clear of any noise or fireflies. This is it for now. I'm Paolo Ciccone for Preta 3D, 3D ready to wear. I'll see you next time.